So last session we covered uh, a little bit of the inception architecture and different types of or different variants of doing inception. For instance, two three by three convolutions stacked on top of each other is gonna have a similar receptive field or exactly the, the same size of a receptive field as a five by five convolution, but it's gonna be cheaper. So why not use it? So you, you can just stack three by three convolutions on top of each other and just use that for more efficient neural networks. The other one is one by n and n by ones are gonna turn out to have the same receptive field as n by n's. And these are also cheaper because you have one less for loop. You have one for loop here, another one here, but it, then it's stack on top of each other. And the other one was that now that you know that you can use one by n and n by one convolutions, it means that you can just, rather than stacking on top of each other, you can just put them next to each other and then concatenate them. So these were the observations that they made in that paper to improve the accuracy of their model. Then the question is, how are we gonna deal with uh, layers like this, where you're reducing the number of their resolution size, or basically your grid size? How are we gonna deal with that? How are we gonna change 17 to eight then? The idea is you can use it this way. There are two ways, these two are just two ways of looking at the same thing. Basically the one on the right says that you are going from resolution 35 by 35 to 17 by 17. But how do you actually do it? You, you do it using strides. Your pulling is gonna have a stride of two. Then you do a one by one convolution to reduce the dimension, basically reduce the number of channels. And then you do a stride of two, you do the same thing here. So this is a typical example of how do you, how you would reduce the grid size from one layer to the other one. And if you compare it to the one on the left, these are basically very similar except for the strides. So there's a stride two here, stride two, and then there is no one by one convolution. So this, branch is just left out. Any questions so far? There is another modification and that has nothing to do with the, with the structure of the neural network. It has to do with the loss. It has to do with the way that you formulate your loss function. But let's remind how a typical loss function works for a deep neural network. Let's say X is your training example. That's the input, that's one image and K is the corresponding label, which could be one up until K, capital K. So in the case of ImageNet, you're gonna have 1000 labels, capital K is 1000. And what you do is in the last layer, there is a linear layer that is turning your 2048 dimensions and projecting it into 1000. And then on top of that, you're gonna apply a softmax. So this is the input to the softmax and the output is gonna have the same size. But what is the softmax? So far we were not covering it and I think now it's a good time to cover it. So the softmax is gonna take these logits, ZKs, which are the outputs of your linear layer, the last linear layer, and then it's gonna turn that into probabilities. It's gonna take ZK, take the exponential, and divide it by the summation. So this guy is gonna normalize it. Exponential is gonna make sure that things are positive. And then once you divide by the, the summation over the exponentials of all the other classes, you are turning the output into a probability. Now they're gonna to sum to one. If you put a summation here over K, the numerator and denominator are gonna cancel out and then you're gonna get a one. So now this is a probability. Is that clear? Yes, no? Okay, perfect. And let's say Q is gonna denote your ground truth distribution. What is the ground truth? You know what is the corresponding K. An image in your training data, let's say if it's the image of a tiger, 
you know that the corresponding label is gonna be a tiger. So you're gonna pick one of these, let's say the 100th label is what you associated with the tig tiger. And let's call that K star. That's your ground truth. K star is the ground truth is one of these numbers. For instance, for the case of tiger, it's 100th one. Your K is gonna be a delta Dirac function. What is that? If K is equal to K star, if you are at the true label, you get a one. Otherwise it's zero. And if you add it over Ks, you see that that's, that add up to one. So that's actually a distribution and it's picking at one of your correct labels at K star. So what is our loss function then? This part you know, from the first slide, you know that you are gonna maximize the likelihood. This is the likelihood. Maximizing the likelihood is equivalent to maximizing the log of the likelihood because log is increasing, is uniformly increasing function. So it doesn't change the maximum value. And then in machine learning, we usually like to minimize. That's why you multiply by a negative sign. That's gonna give you your negative log likelihood. Basically, you want to increase the likelihood of the correct label. So that part we know from the first slide. And this, and this is pretty intuitive. If you increase the probability of the correct one, because everything has to add up to one, you are decreasing the probability of the other ones. So there is that constraint implicitly in your model. So that's doing the correct thing. And if you write the cross entropy defi definition, this is just a notation for cross entropy between two distributions, H of Q and P. And what I'm writing here is just the definition of cross entropy. So you take the expected value, basically this is your expected value of the log of the distribution, log of P. And because Q is a delta function, most of the times it's zero. It's only one when K is equal to K star. This summation is gonna collapse into the term that you have on the right. So cross entropy loss function is equivalent to negative log likelihood. So do you have any questions? Can you still use this if maybe you have a single, you have multiple labels per image? You mean you have multiple correct labels? Yes, yeah, there that's are right. Two objects in your, maybe there's a tiger, there's a dog and a cat simultaneously in your image. That's what you're saying? Yes. The answer is no, you cannot use this. Even if you change Q, it doesn't sort of work? No, because of this assumption that you're saying that the probabilities have to add up to one, but then your probabilities are not gonna add up to one because there are two objects. The way that you fix that, the fix is very simple. You use a seek point. Ah, okay, thank you. Because the probability of your dog and cat, if you have two of them in your image, they don't have to necessarily add up to one because with probability, I don't know, 0 0.9, the object on the left could be either a dog or a window, okay? And then the probability of the object on the lower left of your image could be either a cat or a bird. So they don't have to add up to one. So this assumption doesn't work anymore. But that's a great question. And there are actually sometimes that you want to identify multiple objects in your image. We're gonna cover that later on in the course. Any other questions? So sometimes you hear the cross entropy loss, sometimes you hear the negative likelihood loss. So these are equivalent. Why? Because your ground truth has a delta Dirac distribution. Okay, so far so good. The paper didn't do anything special. It's just what has been around forever. What changes yet did they make? They observed that sometimes these neural networks are gonna overfit because the way that this loss function is working is that it's pushing the correct label or the logit of the correct label to go to infinity and the other ones go to zero. So there is a huge gap in the logit space between ZK, ZK star and other ZKs. So one of them is gonna to go to infinity and the other ones are gonna to go to zero. So this has two problems. One is that it's gonna make the learning difficult when you take the gradients. The other one is that it 
helps your model overfit. If you give enough capacity to your neural network, as you are doing here, it might actually push ZK to be infinity. And then it turns out that it's overfitting. It's memorizing your training data. So the idea is that you can replace the label, the correct label, with something random, maybe a uniform distribution. So what this does is that, let's say you pick a, the image of a tiger. Most of the times, epsilon is a small number. Most of the times, the correct label associated with this is going to be the underlying truth, the ground truth. It's going to be tiger. But then sometimes you say, that's not a tiger. You say, my ground truth is just something random. That's a bird. Or that's a, that's a window. That's a door. So sometimes you trick your model. You give it the wrong data. So let's just do that. Basically with probability epsilon, you're replacing the ground truth with something random. And U is uniform. It's a uniform distribution. So equally, probably you're going to associate a random label to your data, to your input image. So let's just do that. Let's take Q prime and put it here in place of Q. This is called label smoothing. It's sort of regularizing your neural network, but the regularization is happening at the end, at the last layer of your neural network. So we know how to regularize the other layers. Sometimes we are using dropout, sometimes we are using batch normalization. This is the last layer that you're regularizing it. So if you take Q prime and put it here in place of Q, you have one minus epsilon Q. So that's gonna give you one minus epsilon H of Q and P. And H, we know that's the definition, plus epsilon H of U and P. So sometimes it's Q, sometimes it's U, with epsilon being a small number. Now let's use the definition of H, U and P. H, U and P, the cross entropy, is just the KL divergence the uniform distribution and the underlying probability, basically the probability that the model predicts, plus H of U. But let's look at this objective function. What are we minimizing with respect to? Can anybody answer? We are minimizing this loss with respect to what? The parameters of your neural network. And the parameters of the neural network are affecting what term here? Is it affecting Q or is it affecting P? So it's affecting P. So you are minimizing this loss with respect to P, correct? Yes, Sarush, that's correct. So you're doing it with respect to P. Now your objective function, if you're minimizing with respect to P, this term depends on P. This term doesn't depend on P. It means that its derivatives are zero with respect to P. It means that this term doesn't have any effect on your loss function. So you can simply drop that. And as I said, U is a uniform distribution. So what you're doing is just trying to regularize P to move towards the uniform distribution. It means that you're trying to avoid some of your ZKs to be going towards infinity and the other ones going towards zero. So you're trying to push everything towards normal, but you don't do it aggressively. You do it for a very small epsilon. So that's how you're regularizing. And KL divergence is just measuring the distance between two distributions. So you're trying to minimize the distance between two distributions. So that's another change that the paper makes. And then they are going to report some very good results in their paper. Any questions? And H is just the entropy. H of U is just H of U and U. So we learned about a lot of concepts. One is how cross entropy, what is the definition of cross entropy? That's the definition. How is it related to likelihood? That's how it's related under this assumption. And how we are going to do label smoothing. And what's the definition of KL? Basically, KL, you can define it to be H of U and P minus H of U. And H of U is just H of U and U. So everything is consistent. Is everything clear? And any questions?
regularization is very important in neural networks. And we saw that all over the place, starting from AlexNet paper up until even this one. So from the beginning of your neural network until the end, you're doing regularization. Okay, if there are no questions, so the structure is clear, yes? Sometimes you're making some contributions on the neural network construction side of things. Sometimes you're doing contributions, if you write a paper, on the loss side of things. Basically, you want to come up with a better loss function.